Hey, what's up, everyone? George here. Thanks for stopping in, watching this video. Hope you're doing great. Hope you're doing fantastic. Um, sorry, I know it's been a few weeks since I've posted. Um, it's just been kind of a crazy couple weeks. Uh, we've had a lot of birthdays, both of my kids' birthdays, my birthdays. My wife's been out of town. It's just been crazy. So I've been a little bit off, but I'm back on it for definitely a few weeks here. So I'm excited for some content I'm making. Um, and so, yeah, if you're into filmmaking, uh, especially from those from a faith, maybe a faith-based faith -based background, um, yeah, follow along. I think you like this channel. I'm not gonna be big into like promoting a bunch of stuff and like subscribe. Just no, look if if you like this stuff, you know I don't know. Do the things you're supposed to do. Um, but hey, uh, this is a series I've been doing uh, that I've really been enjoying. It's just kind of I'm calling it just processing out loud. I don't know. I just like call, I like that. Uh, I'm a processor. I'm a strong processor. But I like to kind of process some things that I've been just been thinking about, especially in the film kind of atmosphere. And um, I want to talk about something that I've, I've, I don't know, like, I feel like a lot of people are recently have not been into like New Year's resolutions. I know it's June, so you're like, what are you talking about? But I, I love New Year's resolutions. And one of the ones I had for this year, which I feel like has been really good for me, and I wanted to share it because um, I think I, I realized that this was something in my filmmaking spit, in filmmaking world that had become a crutch for me. Um, I feel like for me, like in, in, in going a little bit into what I want to do long term, I really want to be a, a director and DP of films, you know, large feature films, short films. I love filmmaking, like truly screenplays and episodic stuff, uh, episodic shows. I love that content. I want to direct that stuff. Even, you know, I, I like commercials and I think commercials are great, but I really want to do that long term. Um, and so obviously the, that type of work you are you know, using, you know, big sets, you know, crews, union crews, you know, all that different stuff. You're working with people who are part of the industry. You're not always working with like people who are like YouTube filmmakers. And I'm not downplaying those people. I think those people are amazing. That's obviously kind of where I come from and watching a lot of people like Danny Gavertz's of the world and the Peter McKinnon's, Lewis Potts. Those are people I love watching. I think those people are amazing, right? Um, but like when you get into like filmmaking world, you're working with people who are professionals, people who have been doing these jobs 20, 30, sometimes even 40 years. I was just on the set with the gaffer, this old British guy who's been a gaffer for like 35 plus years. It's amazing, right? So they don't really come from like a YouTube world and they're not really always caught up with kind of the trends of, of YouTube. They just, but they just, they know their filmmaking stuff, right? And so when you're interacting with those people, something that I found to be a crutch of mine as a director and a DP was the overuse of the word cinematic <laughs> and so one of my resolutions for this year was to almost like do my best to like completely eliminate that word from my vocabulary i mean and here here let me i just want to go into this like why again i understand where it came from you know with i look i have been doing filmmaking i, I got into doing video in like 2011 so over 12 almost yeah, coming up on 13 years which is crazy i remember my first camera i ever was doing video on was a canon 70 and we were stoked because it was like you could do 60 on 720 we feel like that was man the world was changing right and so i've been doing video for a long time and um you know youtube came along and and as the camera started getting better and better we started really going from not just wanting to have like good video, but we wanted to get like cinematic. And we're trying to describe, okay, there's a difference between like us who are doing like wedding videos and maybe like little stuff for those for our churches or whatever the case might be. But we wanted to get to like make it look like films. And so it was like, well, how do we make it cinematic? And cinematic became this like catch all word. It was like a verb and an adjective and a noun. <laughs> which was crazy, right? And so it was became this like all-encompassing word, how we get cinematic lighting, and how do we get cinematic, you know, how we want cameras that are cinematic, and all this other stuff, right? And so cinematic became this word, again, it was very like, it was, it became an adjective to describing all this stuff. And again, I get it, it was very big. It's, you know, you look up, if you're into the YouTube and like, t you know, keywording and tagging stuff, cinematic is like this crazy, the word cinematic is this crazy uh, word that gets used a ton, and the, the competition for is like insanely high for trying to like get your videos ranked or you know trying to get like noticed for using the word cinematic right because that it's just people filmmakers people who love video are using that word so often to describe you know a, a look they're trying to achieve and so again i, I yeah all through those years i was doing video on youtube i understood i started using that word cinematic well okay well i want cinematic lighting and i want cinematic this and cinematic that and Again, it served its purpose, but I think when you're starting to, you know, when you want to grow, I think you have to, you know, look at things that become crutches in your life and kind of eliminate them. Um, and
and I just remember recently, like kind of, it was late last year, I was on some sets and I was with some people and I kept using that word and people were looking at me like, okay, yeah, but like, what do you mean? And I'm like, yeah, I just, you know, I want to look cinematic. And I just remember kind of like some of the roles of the eyes. And again, these are people who are again, in the industry, these are film, these are people that like their job, their nine to five job every day in and out is, you know, the sound, sound technicians and the grips and the gaffers, you know, camera, you know, at first and second ACs, all these different people, right? People who like, this is their job. And again, so they may not be up on the trends of YouTube and watching all these big YouTubers and all that different stuff, but they know their stuff. And so they kind of rolled their eyes and I kind of felt like, man, I had like a, like a, like a small moment of like imposter syndrome of like, ooh they know <laughs> right and so but then I, but what it caused me to realize was like well, it was a crutch like I need to be well versed in what I'm trying again as especially as a director and a DP or even getting like gaffing if you're head of a department for on a, on a video on a, on a film set or commercial set or whatever you one of your main jobs is being able to communicate to the people below you what you're trying to achieve if you're a dp hey this is the look i want from the lighting from camera work to uh, um you know the sets and like, you're trying to communicate to all those other people their jobs wh what you want them to do and what, how you want to achieve the look that you're trying that you're trying the director's trying to achieve right same thing from the director you're trying to communicate to the dp and to all the other department heads hey this is what we're trying to achieve this is what the producers want this is what i want to look like what I want to feel like. And so communication is like really, truly important. And you have to be like clear and have clarity and have specifics on what you're trying to ask these people because cinematic, although again, for a lot of us, we kind of understand what we're talking about, is a very broad term. There's a lot of things cinematic. There's a lot, like you watch movies and there's all types of lighting. There's a wide spectrum of lighting types and styles. There's a wide spectrum of, you know, camera movements and, and all sorts of stuff. And so um, I think that when you use that word to someone, again, who maybe is not well-versed in some of this other like YouTube stuff, it, it, it's like, that's not descriptive at all. It's not helpful at all, right? And so that became a crutch for me. And so that was something that I was like, I'm going to do differently going forward. I don't want to just use that word and that phrase because it, it, if I really, like, I think for me, one of the things that I really pride myself on is being a learner. Again, I talk about it. I've been doing video from, like, the beginning of 20, like, 11. And so, um... Like one of these that like annoys me, one of my pet peeves is like I meet, meet people who've been doing video for like a few years and they like, act like they know everything. They just act like they're like just kind of the ish, right? And I'm like, dude, that's annoying. That's just like a bad like like vibe to bring to any set or to just any kind of relationship, right? So for me, who's been doing it for 10 years, 15, 12, 11 years, I still pretend like I know nothing. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to be humble about everything. I want to be critical of myself. Not that I'm like, you know, bashing myself. But I want to be critical. Like, hey, where can I grow? Where can I? Like what? What don't I know? Or what can I get better at? What what things can I even learn some different nuances of? And I feel like the ways that I've challenged myself this year in this realm has been great. Like I want to be able to be on set and communicate to these people when I'm working with them exactly what I want in terms and in ways that they understand. Um, and talking about like again, getting into lighting, right? You're talking to like a, a DP or a gaffer. Like talking about, hey, how you want to shape light and do I want a high key lighting or low key lighting or, you know, like what 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 mood and tone do we want to uh, inflect on, on, on this project, on this film or whatever we're working on? Instead of just saying, I want cinematic lighting, you want to be able to talk about what you're trying to achieve. And then in their terms, how do we achieve it for lighting? I want to look like this, hey, you know, again, cinematic. I think, again, this is, this is like a crazy broad term, but like one of the things I've really even challenged myself is like, OK, but, you know how do I break it down and some things I love like I, one of my favorite movies is Jurassic Park um, and I like the amount of times I watch Jurassic Park and like dude how many dolly shots are in that are in that film is insane like I feel like literally like every like scene has like this big dolly shot which is great right I love the dolly shot so even a big part of cinematic things is like well camera movement right it's not just it's like what what makes things cinematic it's like well okay lighting we well, I feel like that's exhausted ag ag nauseum ad nauseum on YouTube is light cinematic lighting okay cool we, okay lighting but also movement's a big part of that like we want to talk about the type of movements you want like, you know, I want I want a big I want a nice dolly shot in I want um you know I don't want to just like throw things on like a Ronin or whatever but like I want to have intentional movement that speaks to what this emotion is whatever we're trying to convey I want to do that and do that right um um, a big thing I've been challenging myself to, when, like, or has been come out of this challenge is been like thinking a lot more about set design and you know uh, like 
I think a big part of being cinematic is making the world that you're in is believable. So what's the set design look like? What's props and what's wardrobe and all sorts of stuff. So being able to talk through that and be get specific about set design, huge. Um, you know, um, and, and like all, again, all all stuff ties together from the lighting from camera movements to set design to uh you know and then of course it gets down to acting or or just again if you're doing narrative stuff acting or whatever the performance that they're trying to do make sure all that stuff is congruent to achieving the look and feel that you're trying to achieve and so that's just a challenge that i think has really paid dividends massively for me um, and again, continue to be a grower and a learner and someone that doesn't pretend like I know everything just because I watch these YouTube people, like I, I can just step into on set and do whatever I want. It's like, no, like I need to grow. I need to stop using the word cinematic and stop using it as a crutch because um, again, for the people and the projects that I want to be on set with, I need to be much more um, intentional and clear and direct about what I'm trying to achieve. And so I've been reading a lot of film books. I've been um, watching a ton of like film BTS. Like, um, again, I love Jurassic Park. I just found this like crazy, I, th I think it's like on the Universal YouTube or whatever, maybe Sony Pictures YouTube, whatever whatever the YouTube is that, that, that like published the film, but they have like all this crazy BTS from like the original Jurassic Parks and even some of the Jurassic Worlds and some of that stuff. Just watching that stuff, listen to the language that, that like Steven Spielberg uses or Bryce Dallas Howard is using or whoever the DP is or what, like you're just listening to the language and going, oh, okay, I, like it's, you know, you, you get into like uh, the world and the language and the understanding of being on a film set or again, maybe a short film or, or commercials, whatever the case might be. And you just learn and grow. And so that's a challenge for me that's been super rad and helpful. Hopefully, maybe, maybe again, maybe you are like me and have similar dreams and ambitions and goals. Maybe it's something that you can, maybe something from there that you can kind of learn and glean from and want to try and challenge yourself in. Um, and if you're with it, let me know. If you're not, keep it to yourself because, you know, this is a positive place. You know what I mean? But, yo, I also want to know, like, what are things that maybe this year you've been challenging yourself as a filmmaker? I love, again, I've talked about it so much this channel. I want this channel to be a channel of, like, community. I want to get to know people. I'm not coming at you from a filmmaking expert. I'm not an expert in filmmaking. I just love it. I just, I'm an enthusiast. I'm a it's my passion and so i want to uh share my passions with you guys online and i want you guys to share them with me i want this to be a community i want to learn from you guys there's so many amazing people that i've gotten to connect with over instagram and youtube who are doing different things first acs second acs uh script supervisors uh, uh you know people who are also directors and dps sound engineers like I, i'm getting to connect with you guys and it's so cool because i'm learning from your world your world and realm what you do and i'm just i just get to like i don't know i guess to geek out and be just a kid about it so i love it so let me know in the comment section let me know where we ever on dms what like man what are things that you've been challenging yourself in or things that you want to challenge yourself in um because uh yeah like that stuff that stuff excites me and inspires me so um hey that's it for today's video again i, I just love these little processing out loud stuff just kind of talking about film stuff um if this again inspired and encouraged you let me know in the comment section uh, i would love to get connected and um that's it i've got some other stuff i'm really excited about some other I'm, I'm doing some more processing a lot of stuff but i'm also doing some other stuff some of my own projects talking processing through some bts stuff um and just kind of going over some bts so some films i've been on some projects i've been doing um i'm even doing working on like this cool little piece where i'm breaking down some like films and just things that inspire me from like films films i think it'd be cool so um make, make sure to follow along subscribe like all that fun stuff um, let's get connected. That's most important for me. And uh, I'll see you around the way. Peace.